Hello, friends. A very good evening. Uh, this is Suveer Bhatia at this side. Uh, today's instructor for uh, for the session. Uh, and folks, I just wanted to confirm if if you were able to hear me, uh, is my voice quite audible? Plus, also, do I have any disturbances in the background? Uh, please, uh, please raise a hand in case if the voice is clear. Thank you, Vikas. Thank you, Shine. So I can see um, yeah, we have uh, Abhijit with us. We have Aniket. We have uh, Bhavani Shankar. We have Chandish. Uh, we have Chaitanya. We have Damodaram. We have Dayan, Maheshwari, Manish Kumar, Mayank, Mohit, Nikeshi, Paresh, Rajender, Rakesh, Ramesh, Satya, Shine, Siddesh, Sirisha, Sudipta, Vijay Kumar, Vikas Arora, and uh, Zishan Hayat. So, welcome all in today's session for uh, the artificial intelligence. Uh, this session is planned for 60 minutes, and we'll be talking about the trends, the opportunities, and also uh, the benefits of learning artificial intelligence. Now everyone is talking about Sure. Thank you, Bhavani. Thank you for the for the for the chat. All right. So before we get into uh, the session, I'll just give you a brief background about myself. Uh, my name is Suveer S U V W -E, e R. My name is Suveer Bhatia, um, and I come from an analytics background. Um, I have an overall IT experience of almost twelve years. So, out of which uh, seven years uh, belong. Uh, pure to analytics and rest five years belong to basic reporting and, and descriptive analysis. I started my career in 2004 and of course in 2004 we didn't really have the big data boom. We really didn't have the data centers. You know, we really didn't have the, um, the analytical or any other uh, AI capabilities or machine capabilities because the 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 tools uh, were, were weren't capable, so the the computation power uh, was not great when I started my BI career. So typically, I started with uh, Crystal Reports. I started my career as a um, as a Crystal Reports developer, and then I moved into SAP. Um, I worked on a lot of SAP reporting tools. Um, then in 2010, just seven eight years ago, I got into um, a retail analytics project. And the requirement there was to work on the retail project, uh, primarily uh, using R programming. Uh, so R programming, Python, um, uh, basically, uh, uh, they, they are my core technologies. I work on these technologies. Um, uh, if you talk about other descriptive technologies, then I do work on uh, Tableau, ClickView, Spotfire, etc. Uh, so today's session is not about uh, the descriptive statistics. It's not about um, statistics. It's not about uh, uh, it's not about uh, uh, data science. We are talking about uh, artificial intelligence. Of course, both artificial and machine learning um, is a part of data science. Okay. So quickly, uh, guys, if you can just write on the chat box about your experiences, about your background, so that I will have a fair idea uh, with whom I'm interacting and of what level we have uh, with us today for the discussion. So quickly, guys, your um, uh, academic um, uh, qualification, plus in case if you have any professional experience of five years, eight years, 10 years, you can quickly put that into the chat box. And I will read that uh, for you. And also, um, I would like to have one more feedback. Uh, is that um, is my screen pretty visible? Can people see my screen? All right. Thank you, Sirisha. Thank you, uh, Pavneen, for for the response. So, guys, um, about your backgrounds, about your uh, about your qualifications. So the Vikas uh, says he comes from a data warehouse business intelligence background of 15 years experience in Oracle BI, Tableau, Informatica, etc. That's nice, Vikas. That's very nice. 
so I'm sure that this um, learning of AI and ML uh, will not be an uphill task for you. For Bhavani, I'm just a student about to complete my undergraduation. Okay, uh, that's great, uh, Bhavani, that you have really forecasted about learning this technology. Uh, Parvez says, uh, Parvez has 20 plus years of data engineering and management, analytics, machine learning, and AI digital transition and transformation. So that's nice, Parvez. So I'm sure that learning AI and uh, machine learning will should not be a uphill task for you. Uh, Pavani says about three years. Uh, okay, uh, Pavani. Uh, Shridhi Shah says working as my working as a SQL database administrator, having experience for four years. Uh, that's fine, Sarisha. Um, uh, database experience is must when we talk about uh, uh, technologies. Uh, Mohit says 15 years, data warehousing ETL expert. Shine says just two years of experience and working as data scientist. You are new to this field. Uh, Chandish says uh, SAP 20 years, functional, technical, related to possible how they are applied in SAP Leonardo context. Uh, okay, Chandish, I'll try my best to do that uh, if time permits. Uh, Satya says uh, he's got 15 years of experience working in in UK, mainly in SAP migration consultant, not a problem, Satya. So if you're working in SAP, then definitely this is the all new domain together because SAP is very restricted as far as the SAP NetViewer framework is concerned. We cannot do anything outside that. So, but if you're coming outside SAP, then the, the, there is a whole lot new world for you. So says, I have 32 years of ID experience, 12 years of analytics, last five years in data science and big data exploration. That's nice, uh, Sudipta. Definitely, uh, you can help us with some uh, greater insights uh, on the subject, if possible. Um, Chaitanya Shiva Shankar says uh, he's got eight years of experience, seven years into clinical data management, and one year internship in data science. That's that's absolutely fantastic. Means the the kind of the kind of uh, 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 you know the participants uh, I have we have today. I think uh, you know we'll definitely have a very nice session. So guys, um, I'll quickly start with the slide. Um, let me know in case uh, if you want me to do a full screen, I'll just do that right now. Okay. Uh, okay, so what is artificial intelligence and deep learning? Expect this session to be, uh, to be interactive. So if you have any questions, you can put that in the chat box in case I, I want you to respond then I'll I'll, I'll ask you to put that into the chat box. Okay, uh, so this is this slide is something which we have finished. So our professional experience, our current roles, etc., is what we have already discussed. Uh, the agenda for today is uh, what is AI and deep learning? Um, which are the industries uh, getting disrupted by artificial intelligence? Uh, what is the potential use case in artificial intelligence and the career and the job trends? So. Artificial intelligence, uh, I'm sure everyone would know this. But rather than just being talking about what artificial intelligence and deep learning is, probably we can have an open discussion. So uh, with my experience, artificial intelligence uh, on, the, on the assignments or on the work currently, which we are doing in AI and ML, mm -hmm. uh, basically artificial intelligence has got many streams. It's not just one stream as such. It is called cognitive. Uh, it is into medical science, it is into finance, it is into insurance. It is also um, for drug discovery, uh, for, for financial trading, uh, for, uh, for manufacturing product, for uh, cost optimizations, and many other. It's also used artificial intelligence for uh, sound recognitions. It's also used for um, fingerprint recognition. So. Uh, the Cortona, which we have in my, uh, Microsoft Windows 10, that is also built on artificial intelligence. So basically, it is a speech recognition system wherein you speak and the Cortona on the other side uh, interprets that speech and responds based on that. Um, the, the, the new flavor of um, artificial intelligence is basically on the chatbot side. So I'm sure everyone has a must have seen about chatbots. Now, chatbots are an automatically automated systems wherein we don't require any manual intervention of the user or any person sitting on the other side and responding to the technical or functional queries the, the bot would do for us. 
basically we talk about the NLP in that the natural language processing, which is uh, which is basically understanding the text you know, which uh, which a person has written. Uh, so yeah, so we'll talk about much of the use cases uh, in artificial intelligence. Um, artificial intelligence is also used um, for many of the uh, uh, defense projects. Um, okay. Okay, uh, I think uh, there is some, uh, there was a feedback on the chat box. Some people say the volume volume is too high and a bit background noise. Ironically, I'm unable to adjust volume from my phone. So guys, uh, it seems that there is, uh, my I have a high pitch in the voice. Uh, is it, is it, uh, is it true for everyone? Okay. Okay, so I have to move the mic uh, a little ahead. So I think now it should be fine. Thanks, Pavish. Thanks, Sachin. Thanks, Abhijit. All right. So uh, artificial intelligence. I'm sure that uh, what is it? Deep learning. Now, artificial intelligence and deep learning. Now, my for guys, those who are very new to this field of data science. Uh, you must be wondering then, sometimes the industry talks about big data Hadoop, sometimes the industry talk, talks about the deep learning, sometimes they talk about artificial intelligence, and sometimes they talk about the digital analytics using machine learning techniques. So what is this all about? I mean, are we going to are we gonna live with these individual pieces, um, or are we going to collate all these pieces together and form one cohesive business solution or, or, a, or a solution to a business uh, problem so basically um, all of these pieces what we read in the newspaper or what we hear from people they all come from the same root called as data science now data science includes um, a couple of things it involves um, extensive statistics it involves extensive volume of the data uh, it, it involves extensive technical expertise it involves extensive functional inputs uh, to the artificial intelligent uh, model which we have created okay now let's go to the next slide and see what is artificial intelligence and what primarily it does so ai uh, it makes possible for machines to learn from experience okay now to give a small example generally I have a habit of giving examples just to make it simple. So, so let's say there is a there is a uh, there is an automated uh, chatbot which gives responses to the business queries or the users who are chatting on, on on the website with the with the artificially created bot. Okay, um, let's say if a person has asked a, a question uh, which was asked earlier. In the same uh, for this on the same uh, issue, the chatbot should be intelligent enough to find out whether this question was asked earlier. If the question was asked earlier, then what was the response given on that question? And in case if the response was given to that question, then can we throw back the answer to that question again? So that probably would be the simple uh, mean. So what I mean to say um, that machine learn from the experience. So as in we move forward, our machine becomes more mature and mature and becomes more capable. It becomes more accurate. Um, it becomes more, um, um, you know, validated. It becomes more scalable when we talk about when machines learn from the experience. So to give an example, if I am creating a classifier network, which actually classifies, let's say, um, the email. So, if you if you have a look at the Gmail part, now in the Gmail we have the inbox, the social networks, the um, the promotions. You know, the Gmail has recently started. Maybe three four years ago, they started the bifurcation of the emails, or even the the spam email which we receive in the inbox. Typically, it is classified based on the classifier. So, if if the if someone reports the recipient as a spam, then Google will you know, we'll, we'll take a note of that 
And in the future, if any email comes from the same recipient, Google is likely to put that in the or classify them into the spam. Uh, just to imagine there are multiple permutations and combinations for an email to be a spammer. Okay. Now, initially, when Google must have launched this kind of a kind of a kind of in a method to segregate the emails, I'm sure some of the spam emails would also reach the inbox. You know, because the the model was not that trained enough, that was not it was not mature enough. Now, since Google is operating um, uh, over 15 years now, definitely they have learned a lot from um, the emails, uh, uh, what they exchange between people. And I'm sure the model would also be learning now. So now, when we, when we talk about the email classifier, it gives 99% accuracy for Google uh, when it classifies the email. Uh, similarly, when we want to classify the image, let's say if I upload an image of um, of, of a fighter jet, uh, then you know my model should classify the fighter jet image into flying objects, or it should classify that classify that into jet planes or something like that. Now, in order for, for all these things to happen, uh, in fact, I'm not sure if you have read the newspaper. Uh, I think in yesterday's Times, uh, the Facebook uh, has. Um, Trained has created an uh, created an AI uh, a model which is already trained, uh, already trained on. Um, I think uh, I think it's uh, one million. Uh, sorry, it's five million images which it has taken from the Instagram. So it picked up five million images from Instagram and it kind of trained the model. And same goes with the Microsoft Lewis. That is L U I S for your uh, reference. You can Google about L U I S. So Microsoft Lewis, that is that stands for language understanding. Microsoft Lewis does the same thing. Microsoft Lewis has trained the models and have kept it into the framework. The Microsoft has, has trained the the models and has kept it into the ready shelf in Microsoft Lewis. Um, they're just asking companies uh, to to start using the models out of the box. You don't need to model it. You don't need to train the model. And you don't need to finally validate the model, so you can just do everything out of the box in Microsoft Lewis. You can, you guys can can visit Microsoft Lewis and can have a look at that. So yes, um, AI is something which uh, which makes machine learn from its own experience. Okay, uh, AI examples that we hear about uh, is from chess playing computers to self driving cars. Um, they really depend heavily on deep learning, natural language processing, etc. So basically, uh, when we talk about these um, uh, techniques of deep learning and artificial intelligence, we can create robots. We can actually create a Robocop, uh, which will go to the border for, for a particular country and fight on the behalf of that country. So just imagine down the line 10 years, 15 years, we won't need uh, uh, the army with, uh, with the manual uh, fighters. We probably would deploy uh, robots on the borders, you know. So even if the robots are probably skilled, um, uh, you know, that's just a matter of cost uh, to the government, and it's not a matter of life anymore. So moving forward, I'm sure that this will happen. Even if you talk about the technology trends, so and right now we have a lot of demand for developers, be it Java developers, be it Python developers. I'm sure down the line, seven to eight years, uh, there would be no developers because the the tool. Um, is all automated. So you simply need to specify um, to the tool um, that you know I need to add this workflow. After this workflow, I would like to add a main method. After the main method, I would like to add the why, and then I would like to uh, add the try catch exception errors uh, in the program. You simply need to define the workflows, and you just click on a button, and the 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 software will generate the code for us. So down, this probably is possible down the line seven, eight years. Um, so computers can be trained. Now AI, artificial and banking is really helping serve the customer better. How? By customer feedbacks, by customer complaints. We are working on an AI project basically um, that's for customer complaints, um, uh, estimating the customer complaints, um, which we will be getting. So this is a small project which we are working on right now. So, but yes, in uh, banking also, we can really implement artificial intelligence to understand the customers better um, and then provide them a targeted offers uh, which is completely tailored as per their needs. 
So if the customer is also happy, um, he will probably give us good CSAT uh, scores uh, for the banking industries, etc. And also by using artificial intelligence, we are saving a lot of cost by, by not disappointing a customer uh, or also by reducing the manual intensive efforts. So let's go to the AI history. I mean, if you talk about um, the AI part, um, and let me tell you folks, I mean, it is this generation or it is in this time period that we, we, we think that, that AI and deep learning has come just now and it is booming into the market and the job opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. But let me tell you folks, um, the, the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, and even the statistical um, methods mm, are quite primitive uh, in this world. I mean, we've been doing this over 40 to 50 years now. I mean, even in 1960s, if you talk, if you see statistics, if you talk about Monte Carlo simulations, or if you talk about chi-square, if you talk about Poisson distributions, you know, if you talk about Gaussian distributions, these are these were all mathematicians. Now, these guys were all physicists, and they have actually uh, created these logics and theorems way back in 1800th century. Just imagine, I mean, we are still following those techniques of uh, regression, uh, of multivariate regression, logistic regression. All these techniques were um, uh, discovered and framed way back uh, in 50, 60 years ago from now, or probably more than that. And we're still living with it. So what has changed since then? So if it's going on from, from, uh, from that period, from 40, 50 years ago, then why companies are interested in hiring data scientists now and why not earlier? Because we have significantly achieved a maturity level in the technology. Now we have better computing power. Now we have better appetite to, to buy um, uh, better computing uh, resources as far as the hardware is concerned. Now the softwares are more sophisticated when coming up with the 64-bit software editions. The software is much faster. It can store and process um, much faster compared to previous generation computers. So yes, um, these are some of the factors which really add. So if you talk about neural networks, neural networks was initiated way back in 1950s and 1970s. If you if you look at the DARPA, so Defense Academy Research Projects Associations, you must have heard about that. Now DARPA actually funded um, the neural networks and AI projects way back in 1950s, but due to the, the computing limitation power, computing uh, resources and computational powers, the project couldn't move on uh, for a longer time. Uh, machine learning was discovered and kind of worked out in, from 1980s and then up till 2010. Uh, I mean, 2010, we are writing, but I'm sure whatever we see on the screen is all for the United States. In India, now in 2018, we are learning about machine learning. Uh, we're learning about machine learning and artificial intelligence, so probably we're almost eight to nine years behind other countries. Uh, so present day, the deep learning. So it seems from these pictures and it seems from this um, text that now we are talking about deep learning in the present era. We are not talking about machine learning or neural networks, but uh, mind it, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and neural networks, they all fall in deep learning and deep learning eventually falls in data science. So I can use implement data science using deep learning, I can implement the data science using machine learning, using neural networks, etc. Okay, uh, so moving to the next. Uh, so here we have how artificial intelligence works. So one is the machine learning, which automates the analytical model building. Second is a neural network. It is basically a type of machine learning that is made up of um, connected processes, uh, which, which actually gets um, stimulated by some external inputs. Okay, um, deep learning is actually, it uses a, a very large neural network. So typically it has got a lot of combinations, it has got a lot of permutations, it has got many relations, one variable related to another variable. So if we, um, 
So deep learning is a, a huge neural networks with many layers of processing. Um, so taking the advantage of the computing power we have uh, and the improved training techniques, we can really learn to build complex patterns in large amounts of data. And the complex patterns could could be um, people uh, doing a fraud as far as the insurance company is concerned, the likely chances of people doing a fraud in an insurance company, or uh, what is the probability or what is the uh, what is the effect of um, <clears throat> inventing or uh, of what is the effect of, uh, of a drug prevention um, uh, for a group of people or for a population. Um, so we can use, uh, of course, in cognitive services, uh, for security, for cybersecurity, I'm sure that everyone is aware of cybersecurity too. So that is another booming area which we can look at. Uh, so many uses of this. Now, what is cognitive computing? Cognitive computing is basically related to listening, to hearing, to speaking, um, uh, to speaking, to listening, to hearing, to to looking or to watch. So um, basically, it is a field of AI that strives for human-like interaction with the machines. So I just spoke about the chatbots. So chatbots is one part of cognitive computing. The other one is a natural language processing. Um, it, what it does basically, natural language processing, it, it, it takes the corpus of the text, could be a Facebook comment, could be a, could be a YouTube comment, could be the tweeters, uh, tweets which we have. Um, if I would like to, if I like to do the sentimental analysis or something like that, uh, then you know I can use the NLP for that. Now NLP is also very complex. We need to understand uh, each and every aspect of NLP. Okay, there there are some questions on the chat my chat chat box. Let me address those questions. Um, uh, will the recording or PPT be shared with all waiting for them? Sometimes your voice sounds like a robot. I think some technical issue, but now it's okay. <laughs> all right. Probably, um, uh, probably learning artificial intelligence uh, must have made my voice a, a bit robotic. So, what is deep learning? Deep learning is a subfield of machine learning. Okay. Uh, I think this is what we saw on the last slide. Now, if you look at this picture, we have on the x-axis we have the amount of data. And on the y-axis, um, we have the performance. And I'm sure that uh, by looking at both the lines, we can see that deep learning is actually growing exponentially. Uh, it is growing in a very linear fashion. So um, it has um, it has a trend. But but if you see, uh, the trend is moving upward. But there is a likely possibility for it to come down as well. Um, well, maybe a new technology would emerge and the deep learning will be forget, forget forgotten by the people or the folks down the line a few years. But um, by looking at the slide, we can see that deep learning is gaining traction and is gaining momentum. Okay, now deep learning is a function, it's just like a function of the brain called artificial neural networks. Um, so now scientists or or the industry specialists have related deep learning with the artificial neural networks. Uh, basically, um, the inspiration to talk about deep learning was the artificial neural networks. So what is the important property of neural networks? Uh, to get the results better by using more data, by creating better models, by creating uh, capabilities uh, which can compute the large data set. The better algorithms, new insights, and improved techniques. Absolutely. Um, uh, we can. This is one of the ways uh, to implement the deep learning. So let me tell you guys that it's not as simple as it looks on the presentation. It's not as quick and it's not as compact as it looks in the presentation. It, the subject is diverse. The subject is comprehensive. So if you take up the uh, the learning session from today, um, then I'm sure by tomorrow uh, you will be prepared for this because. Because these things takes time. I can learn a technology. I can learn a technology in fifteen days, thirty days, but it takes a real long time for a person to master the technology. Okay, so so uh, so uh, the better the early. So the uh, sorry, the earlier the better. Uh, so the moment you start, 
with this part, I'm sure um, you would realize whether um, it's for you or not, whether you can go on for a longer time in this area and this subject or not. But for folks who are already in analytics, I'm sure that the sessions uh, would be very productive for them and they'll definitely uh, walk away with some informative insights. So uh, I'll just check the chat, chat box again. There is some message coming on there. Um, so uh, there is a question. Uh, there's a question by Abhijit. Uh, uh, hi, sir. Uh, more data means how much data? And so the more data typically has got no limit. I mean, we are talking about 21st century. We're talking about processing the data in 21st century. So, uh, so we have a distributed computing facility now using the big data systems. So if you can, in, if you can involve uh, more clusters, you can process more data. So currently, if I'm using two cluster uh, distributed computing, then definitely they would, it would take some time. And if I increase that to four clusters, definitely the time would reduce to half. If I go in with eight clusters, the time would reduce to almost one four. You know, so depends on what is the volume of your data and how many clusters you're willing to spend money on. So we have the computational resources with us in this century. The only matter is about spending. So if the company is willing to spend really good amount of money to process a certain type of data. So if you have, let's say, if you have a 500 GB data, okay, so, or if you have a, generally 500 GB data is nothing for, for, for a big data system. We talk about petabytes of data. So let's say if you have 10 TB, 20 TB, or 30 TB of data, which needs to be processed, then it makes sense to talk about big data. I hope that answers the question. So uh, moving forward in the slide, uh, so yes, uh, sometimes some technologies uh, are an asset. Uh, uh, they are a boon, a boon to us, but um, also they sometimes turn out to be a curse. So what is the disrupted industries being disrupted by AI? So the description of work is bigger than anything we have seen before. So how, how do you think this will happen? Of course, let's say if I am employing 200 people in my call center, and someone says that, hey, you take this chatbot, you know, and you can deploy this chatbot and the entire enterprise and customers who are coming onto the website, the chatbot can directly interact with them, can solve customer queries, can address feedbacks, can, can do anything and everything what a human can do. The only difference is here there would be no voice. It will simply be, you know, a chat. Uh, but still, customers are happy because they're getting the relevant information. There is no IVR. There is no waiting period on the lines, etc. So customer is also happy. But uh, but in this happiness, customer is happy, but the employee is disappointed because he's no more needed in the office. He's no more needed on the job. So uh, that's what we see that the non-employee freelance workers is forty percent of the U.S. workforce. Okay, and if you see um, in the AI and the robotics, we see that the there is going to be a net job loss by twenty twenty as far as the massive labor is concerned, the human labor is concerned, and the jobs uh, which are unbundled um, into some tasks. So white collar and creative work are not immune. Okay, so basically, uh, um, and then it says that 5.1 million net job loss by 2020. Um, uh, so um, the stage one is sharing economy platforms. Okay, so that's what is uh, happening now. And the stage two, would be the AI and the robotics, wherein the, the it would be the the machine economy. We will be talking about the machine economy. In that period, we will be losing a lot of jobs, the especially the the laborious jobs which we have probably in the supply chain area. If you see um, in the warehouses, so currently in the warehouse we have a lot of m massive uh, intensive labor force. Especially if we talk about the DHL, the, the you know the Blue Dart, and other logistic companies, and even uh, for the e-commerce companies, so we have really huge warehouses where we pile up these stocks. And if I want to move the stock from one place to another, I need ma manual laborers who could do the job for me, lifting it, putting it into the shelf, uh, packing it into the carton, etc. What if uh, you know everything is done by robots or everything is done by uh, forklifters, which is automated? Okay, so the forklifters would lift the cotton, it will put it into a particular shelf based on some algorithm, it will read that which shelf it, it reads and where it needs to be placed. And the moment it gets the trigger, it will go back to the shelf, pick that cotton back and put that into the into the truck. 
or something like that. So just imagine that how many job loss uh, losses we we will have uh, if if this thing is um, is in full, full on if it is it's completely realized by most of the organizations. But the cost of implementation of deep learning, AI, and ML kind of model is very high. Okay, so you can expect, um, you know, only top five, Fortune 500 companies are likely to go in for this one first. Later on, the smaller companies would would kind of wait for the funds to collect and then probably, if they have no choice, they will have to do it. Um, otherwise, I think if the cost is too high, then they'll try, they'll, they'll feel, they'll live with what they have. Okay, uh, so applications of AI, uh, that's what we will be seeing. So um, I think some of them I've already highlighted. So some of the applications are, are image recognition, static image recognition. So if you see um, in the medical um, diagnostic centers, we do have X-ray images, right? So we go and we give the X-ray images to, to the medical diagnostic centers. Um, let's say uh, instead of a doctor reading that image, what if a computer program reads the image? And I'm sure the computer program will read the image better than the doctor because um, he can also, the computer can also say what likely um, uh, is the cause and uh, you know what is the possibility of this being revived. Computer is trained for that. You know, basically we we made computer study medical science. So um, algorithm trading. Of course, uh, the the kind of we trade in the in the capital markets, we can we can train the computer to trade by itself. Um, it's uh, object identification, detection, classification. I mean, uh, the army uh, is already doing it. The defense is already doing the um, the unidentified objects detections, and then um, you know, kind of attacking the objects well, uh, which is kind of a camouflage somewhere. Uh, okay, so. We are already using this using geospatial. So geospatial is a field of GIS, geographical information systems, uh, which helps you uh, know the terrain, helps you know uh, the the area through um, through through satellites. Uh, content distribution on social media. So of course, if you would like to distribute some kind of a content, then there is it, it is a it, it cannot be a laborious job to distribute the content to billions and billions. Of things, so let's say if you if you upload a new product uh, on a Walmart website or probably on a Flipkart website, then I don't need a person manually to assign a category to that product. Okay, so if I'm uploading a digital camera, I don't want to manually go ahead and just tag it up as into an appliance, into um, electronics, and then camera lenses, etc. I want the system to do it by itself. That is con content distribution. Object dete detection and classification. This is what I said. So if I, if I upload uh, a jet um, uh, or a jet fighter plane image into my system, it should automatically detect as a flying objects. So prevention against cybersecurity. This I spoke. Text-based automated bots. This is also I spoke. Sensor data analysis. Basically, it's Internet of Things. To give an example of this, let's say if there is an ice cream manufacturing company, and they have outsourced the job. They have outsourced the job to another logistics company whose responsibility is to take the ice creams from the manufacturing plant. Now, in the midst, what happens? There is like several, uh, there are like hundreds of kilometers they have to travel between the manufacturing plant and the distributor or the retail shop. So, what happens? What they do just to save the fuel? Especially, this happens in India. To save the fuel, they they turn off the refrigeration. You know. So what happens in that um, uh, time, the ice creams, they melt. And again, this they turn on the refrigerator. And then again, ice cream freezes, melts and freezes, melts and freezes. So what happens, the actual taste of the ice cream diminishes. So there's no more further, um, there's no more fun having that ice cream anymore. Uh, so what happens, um, a setback penetration into the market. Uh, low customer feedbacks or low customer satisfactions into the market, so eventually uh, losing on the brand value. So if you if you look at the Internet of Things, then Internet of Things using the sensor data will give you real time information about at what temperature currently the ice creams are traveling on the roads. So this was just a very simple example. A human emotion analysis, um, human emotion analysis uh, is basically um, about the variables involved uh, into the uh, the emotions of a human 
or when he's likely to cry, when he's likely to scream, etc., uh, etc. Et but uh, my specialization is um, currently into NLP, that is natural language processing and uh, deep learning. Um, yeah, a bit on that. So, but for cybersecurity, for human emotion, for geospatial images, um, I'm here to work on these these things. There's a question, it says uh, deep learning and AI falls under similar category. Now, as we saw before that, uh, you know, AI is a part of deep learning. They actually go together. Uh, Chandish has a question, can you explain the journey from say, grade one all the way to data scientist, where do you begin? Um, okay, so if you really want to begin, uh, begin your career in data scientist, um, um, I would encourage you to work on on basic statistics, that is from where you should begin. Satya Pandey, is this uh, ML algorithm models be built in separate tool or each individual companies like SAP, MS build these models in their own technology? Okay, nice question, Satya. Now, see, these companies like SAP and Microsoft, they actually provide you a framework. So if you talk about Visual Studio, I mean, I can also write JavaScript in Visual Studio, isn't it? I can also write Java in Visual Studio. I can also write C Sharp, C++. I can you so there are a couple of options in that framework wherein I can write right. So um, definitely uh, these companies like MS and SAP they create a framework wherein you can use Python, um, you can use R programming, you can use um, um, to some extent C sharp um, to create the machine learning models. I didn't get the question. I said strong AI. I didn't get the question. Sorry for that. Zishan asked a question. What are the major frameworks uh, for uh, for artificial intelligence? So framework basically, its frameworks are built. Uh, uh, Zishan. So uh, you can have a look at the Microsoft Lewis. That is a very good framework to start with. Um, just to just to. But let me tell you, uh, um, uh, you still will have to study the fundamentals of deep learning, you will still have to study the fundamentals and the foundations to do artificial intelligence. So I'm sure that once um, the class is on, the lectures are on, we'll be talking about a lot of statistics, we'll be talking a lot of um, correlations between variables so that we are able to move towards artificial intelligence and machine learning eventually. Uh, so Abhijit has a question, what are the must techniques for Deep learning. Now, deep learning is a journey. Uh, it's not like oh, I can, I can know, um, I can cram basic packages and I can start doing. It's it's a journey. So I would really encourage you um, to start with uh, basic uh, statistics uh, for this matter and then moving forward. Uh, also, Keras is good or TensorFlow. Uh, both are good equally. Keras equally is good as TensorFlow. Uh, TensorFlow is also used uh, for digital image processing and many other uh, applications. Uh, Dayan Mansoor says, is AI related to cloud? If yes, how? Uh, it's not, I didn't, this question is not logical then. Is AI related to cloud? Um, it's not actually that. Cloud is different. I can actually run an AI application over. Okay, so the Vikas has a question. What tools and technologies do we need to learn like R programming and what else? Uh, guys, folks, uh, I would suggest um, that um, you know, you can start with a basic, uh, any basic tool which you feel that you're comfortable with, because tool is independent when we're talking about uh, when we're talking about business value. So I will encourage you to start with basic statistics. You can read a book called "Statistics for Management" by David Rubin and Richard Levin, uh, that will give you a good feel. Um, it is a field guide for me, so it will give you a good jump start in statistics. And once you start with statistics, you can pick up any tool, be it Excel, even using Excel, you can actually uh, run these statistical models. So pick up a technology which you feel is simple to understand for, for you, um, and you can you can understand the concepts of statistics to implement in that tool. Shirisha has a question, do we require coding knowledge to work in AI or data science? Uh, Shirisha, as such, it's not a compulsion for you to know the coding in AI or data science, but in case if you, if you know how to code, uh, you will have a, uh, over others as far as the competition is concerned. So um, I will encourage you, highly encourage you to to also get your hands on the codes. 
if you're not if you're not too old then if you're too young then definitely you can start now okay so i'll go back to the uh, to the slide applications of ai some well coming back to the slide okay the future of ai so what possible future of ai uh, gonna be uh, now this this slide is taken from uh, from one of the known sources uh, for survey so if you see the uh, the uh, the revenue in 2016 and 2025 is likely going to be uh, $1000 it's a million actually so we have uh, so this figure of 8097 is specifically for image classifications so for image recognition and classification you definitely need machine learning you would need statistics as a background or classification techniques uh, the second one goes for algorithm trading performance improvement uh, basically it's for process optimizations the third one is mm, scalable processing of the patient's data efficient scalability using of patient's data is something which is the next third one um, fourth one is predictive and so, for example, an uh, oil company which is running a oil rig right in right in the middle of the ocean, then the the program will tell um, in a predictive way that which part is likely to fall or likely to go out of service uh, and within what period, so that we are able to uh, arrange a subsequent uh, or an alternative parts for the operations to go on. Uh, this one talks about object identification, uh, just now what we spoke. The other one is a text query of images. Um, then we have geophysical feature, automated geophysical. So most of the defense companies are already using it as far as their um, uh, the small robots is concerned, which they have created uh, for to spy. Um, the third last is content distribution, which we have already discussed. And last but not the least is object detection and the last one is cyber security so prevention against cyber security threats so security is one of the emerging field in uh, in, in computing um, so we are also using ai uh, field of cyber security so um, basically we don't have to remember all these uh, numbers um, but in a nutshell all this slide uh, it is pretty um, obvious we do have good scope in artificial intelligence now and moving forward there's a question by Abhijit saying can you talk about an AI application in health analytics predicting a disease or prevention um, I can talk about an example uh, in an um, uh, in AI which um, is related to patient's uh, survival uh, criticality so i mean recently not recently but it's been like almost uh, eight months i'm working on a research paper now the research paper is already published by the mit press journal in the united states but however it has not been accepted by the fda um, so still we are we are not we can and commercialize those models because the accuracy of those models is still not over um not very significant as per the fda so to give an example um let's say a lot of hospitals uh you know when they admit a patient based uh, for for an icu intensive care unit need to make the patient wait uh in the lobby and you know, the patient who's be admitted you know because they have to first test the patient whether the patient is a survive or not because um, hospitals generally they don't take admissions for very critical patients who have who has almost a zero chance of birth. so what they do they go to the pay subject they go to the patient multiple times they take the blood samples they make the patient wait for three to four hours in the lobby and eventually then they to give admission now i'm sure that some people know this and some people may not know as we as pe normal people when we have some some kind of a, not a major disease then we don't realize that you know that um, we need to so long but for people those who really need to get admitted in icus they really need to wait for a period of time 
Then hospitals, they do a routine check on them. They do 10,000 tests. And later on, they uh, they come to a conclusion by doctor's discussion that whether the patients should be given an admission or not. Now, this is one part of that. But the the, the blood trials, which the hospital, hospital takes from the patient, is also very painful for the patient, plus also very painful for the relatives because the relatives uh, really get, uh, get uh, kind of nervous there is a drug uh, whenever there is a blood sample taken of uh, patients. So there is um, a white paper, research paper all on this part wherein the, wherein the model is built using artificial intelligence that the model will actually predict, the model will actually predict what are the likely chances of, uh, you know, the patient's uh, survival. Let me tell you guys, it's not the survival analysis. No, survival analysis is different. Google about survival analysis, that technique is a bit different. But I'm not about survival analysis. I'm talking about uh, you know uh, creating two classes uh, in my classification model. One class would be a uh, would be uh, a live class, and the other class would be a dead class. You know, so when I pump in the patient's data inside that model, the 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 model to tell me that how many of them are likely to be dead and how many are likely to live. Uh, this is not survival analysis. It is different. Survival analysis is actually, uh, it's actually the, the life cycle, okay, of a patient. And so I hope uh, that answers the question. Uh, 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 unfortunately, I believe that paper is not available on Google, and usually most of this paper you, is not available on Google. Um, I have myself signed up to some subscriptions. So this is from one of the subscriptions. Uh, which I have taken. So I hope that uh, I hope that uh, excites you, Abhijit. Um, the second one, uh, there is a there is a question by Amrutyunjaya. He says, "How deep learning is different from other um, algos like XGBoost, LGB Random Forest, uh, and it is built on the logic of uh, neural networks and needed clarity." Thanks in advance. So. Um, um, basically, Random Forest neural networks they are part of. They're all part of deep learning. So deep learning is a big data. Do you think any any technology named big data exists? There is no tool called as big data. There is no technology called as big data. Big is a concept. Big data is a virtual concept, similar to big data, which which now big data. In order to materialize big data, we use we use Mahood, we use uh, Cloudera, we use uh, Hortonworks, we use Hadoop, we use Hive, Spark. Scala, etc. We use all these things um, to materialize the big data. In order to materialize the, we use it using random forest, um, SVM, neural networks, etc. I hope that answers the question, Um uh, so Thanks. Thank you, Abhijit. All right. So uh, let's move to our other slide, which talks about job opportunities. I mean, this is what I'm sure every uh, it will excite everyone. So, of course, uh, our learning is not worth unless we get involved in that. So, the statistics shows the growth of artificial intelligence worldwide from 2017 up to 2025. So, we're just living in 18, so it's just been two years now. Look at the chart by 2025. They are actually, chart is typically about uh, the earning, what's going to have. What, what, so, revenue from AI for enterprise applications is in this dog. We have thirty-one thousand two hundred and twenty-two hundred and thirty-six dollars when we uh, million dollars when we reach uh, we in two thousand in twenty twenty-five. Um, I also don't want to a picture uh, where we should get the count of jobs: two lakhs, five lakhs, one million, two million, five million jobs. Um, we're gonna have in year three or twenty twenty-five. Uh, but unfortunately, I did not get the count of exact count of so, so I had to use this this image. So more or less, it gives us a good projection. It gives us a near growth. If you see, uh, starting from 2016 all up, up till 2025. So this still gives us a good idea about where we are moving and uh, what is the uh, possible uh, opportunities we can have. Um, and by the way, after learning these things. 
Chinese, um, you know, you must have read in the newspapers that U.S. is strongly hiring a lot of people on AI and deep learning, and even in India, not only in U.S. If you like to um, fly abroad, uh, you can learn this. If you like to back, still you can learn this. Um, yeah, so is having a startup in AI is a good thing? Uh, Abhijit, the question is having a startup in AI. So I'm not sure, Abhijit, what you're asking, whether to start your own company in AI or you would like to join a company which is a startup. So in elaborate, I'll be, I'll be in a better position to answer that question. Okay, so I think this is the la uh, the rooting slide for today. Um, so if you have to own a startup, okay, Abhijit has to own a startup uh, in AI. Uh, so basically, uh, Abhijit uh, has extensive knowledge on running the enterprise applications. It requires knowledge on statistics, mathematics, uh, physics also, let me tell you, uh, and requires extensive computational programming experience. In case if you have somebody who is willing to help you, and if you have someone who is already into this field, then I, I will encourage you to go and join as the person, learn the, these things for some time, and then you can you can split and can start your own. But initially, if you are doing this, yes, physics. So initially doing this, um, and then then you know you might have a lot of tasks because starting up your own firm, not sure how much money you have to start the firm. If you have a okay amount of money, then it will take years and uh, for you to, to mature in this field. And by then, I'm sure that, you know, um, you know, then era would come with a bit and we won't need any developers or some new technology might come up. Okay, so my recommendation to you would be to, to work with a startup, the company which offers you extensive AI experience, and then you can think of moving on. Uh, there is a, a question by Satya. Um, uh, what could be different role developer workflow PM etc. As it's a common area, what could be the different role developer workflow? So Satya, as if you're new to this, and definitely uh, depending on your experience, I'm not too sure. You know, the, the initially uh, the initial would be uh, you know your work would be as a developer, wherein you would work on different assignments as far as AML is concerned. Siddish so says, I am new to data science and AI. What is the best course or started in these fields? I would recommend, Siddish, that you can join my session. Uh, I'm not sure if you have plans to do that, but you can join my session. I'm sure the session definitely I'll be addressing a lot of resources as far as learn a lot of resources by simply learning these things in a simple way and all books and directions. Um, uh, Shirisha says, currently, which Companies are using AI. Yeah, in fact, all the companies are using Silisha. So, I mean, we are visiting MNC's clients um, on a regular basis. I'm visiting MNC clients on a regular basis, and they are continuously training their people on AI and ML. Uh, today, also, in fact, I came back from one of the training sessions for one of the corporates, and they have more than 50 people who are being trained on AI and ML just because they are anticipating a lot of work uh, in the next quarter. All the companies, Srisha, most of them, which is at least um, they have, which is at least have they have a significant position in the market, especially insurance. Okay. What's the difference between machine learning and reinforcement learning? Uh, so, basically, uh, machine learning is uh, uh, learning by itself, and reinforcement is basically um, you know uh, pumping an extra kind of uh, uh, into the model so that the model becomes more mature. Uh, Chat. Shiva Shankar, uh, okay, thank you, Chaitanya. Uh, Mayang says, how much coding level is required for? Okay, um, the questions, um, uh, it seems that uh, for the folks who are kind of run away from the coding part, uh, don't do that because uh, coding is just a matter of few things. It's just a matter of understanding things logically. It's, it's, not, it's not a rocket science. So uh, talk about, if this is the question, what is the coding level required for ML? Then I would say, um, extensive. Abhijit says, uh, thanks for the feedback. Thanks, Abhijit. Just says, uh, please explain usage of Ruby versus Spark. Um, uh, if time would permit, I would definitely explain that. I would love to elaborate on that, but unfortunately, it's not there. Uh, Satya says, uh, thanks, Ruby. Very nice over you. Need to 
Dutch. Thanks, Sophia. Thanks for joining the session. Um, uh, Abhijit says, thank you, thank you, Abhijit. Rakesh says, which programming language is better? I mean, it totally depends on your skills. So if you're a, if you're a C Sharp uh, practitioner or proficient in C Sharp, then you can continue programming AI and ML in C Sharp. It's okay. Thanks, Martinja. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, thanks, Shine, for joining the session. All right, folks. So, uh, Malika uh, says, sorry, you joined the session. Yeah, the session. Uh, Malika would encourage you to get in touch with the admin. Definitely, we have uh, uh, sessions going on um, in this week and next week. So, you can get in touch with the admin, and they will definitely place, place you in the session. Thank you, Sirisha. Um, this, uh, thanks for joining today's session. I hope this is informative um, through my limited knowledge uh, I have shared with you. And I hope uh, uh, you have taken some of the other pieces uh, from today's session back home. Thanks for uh, thanks for the feedback, Pavni. Um, Shine says um, it will we can arrange some session on deep learning algorithm. Uh, can you? Yes, definitely we can. Shine. So please get in touch with the admin, and they will do the needful. Um, Sudesh, uh, for the session, thank you. It was informative from my side too. Thank you, Sudesh. Um, Learn expecting more. Yes, Sirisha. So once you come on board or with me on the call for the session. All right, guys. So um, I would um, I would request the permission um, to close the session uh, for today. So do we have uh, anybody on the call? Thank you. Thank you, guys. And uh, I'll log off from the session. And I wish you good luck. And thank you. I'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment us in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist. For more information, visit our website now. Keep learning with IntelliPat.